This might be a better choice than the Tesla. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. We just got an amazing vehicle last week as our team's new work car, and that one has already become one of the most impressive car I've ever drive. So I decided to make this review video for you guys. So this video will be in four different parts. The first one, performance. Of course, it's an EV. It's supposed to be fast. Number two, the battery swap function. In this video, I will show you guys how can I swap out an empty battery to a fully charged one in just six minutes, and that is for free. This is also why I think new fits Chinese market better than the Tesla. Number three, the autopilot. I love each dong. Don't you guys think nowadays all the EVs should be equipped with autopilot to make people's life easier? And the last but the most important part, the price. And now when can you guys get the new in the North America? So let's get it started. The ES8 we got is not a new model, but you know what? The 2018 version is the most powerful version ever. It has about 480 kilowatts of power, which is just over 640 horsepower. How crazy it is! And the car weighs about 48,000 pounds. It can bring you from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 4.4 seconds. This car can deliver all of the 610 foot pounds of torque to the wheel in no time. Because it's an EV, it has no delay, no turbo lag, or no anything. It will just go as you push. But unfortunately, you decided to limit the power in the later model. The 2020 version of the ESA takes about 4.9 seconds to 60 miles per hour. I think it's probably because of the energy efficiency concern. We are running out of battery, only got 83 kilometers of range left here. So, it's time to jump into the second part of this video, the battery swap. I used to be a petrol heller before. I had a 2 V8 and absolutely love them. I love all kinds of V8, the LS7, the Hemi engine, the Coyote engine. And for V10 and V12, that's even better for me. I always want a better ACR. Just simply because there's no replacement for the displacement, right? But I'm also a great fan of Tesla and Elon, because he's kind of the hero in my mind. The only reason why I still don't have any EV car in my garage is just because I don't want to wait for the battery charging time. No matter it's 10 hours or 10 minutes, I just don't want it. The news answer to the battery charging waiting time is the swapping battery function. Hey, know me. Nomi is like the new version of Siri. All you need to do is just tell her that you want to swap battery, and then she will find the nearest one. This one is 7.7 kilometers away, and it already made the reservation for me, so you can just uh, drop it. I've got a ton of gravel in my shoes, girl on my shoulder, heart full of blues and in the dirt. All right, we are finally here at the battery swap station, and uh, right now the system will show me. No one's in front of me, so I guess we can just drive in there. And the battery swap station we are using is still the 1.0 version. It still needs human being to drive the car into the garage and the machine will take over the car. Uh, it's right there. You see there's an RV there. The new stock is living in there, so you can change the swap the battery 24-7 anytime. You just uh, knock the window and uh, they will wake up and swap the battery for you. Yeah. Alright, the stuff is driving our car into the bay and we set up a timer to see how long should we wait for the whole swap. This one got the 70 battery and another one, the newer one, has a 100 kilowatt hour battery which is larger. But no matter it's 70, 84, 100 or 150, they're all packed into the same package. That's for the convenience of the swapping battery. And you know the new give the option to the older version with a smaller battery. They can upgrade the battery to a larger one. I believe it's about uh, $60 a month.
40 seconds. Okay. It's less than six minutes. Not much longer than I fill up at the gas station right there. Now for the 2.0 version of the battery swipe station, you can swipe the battery under four minutes. And I think that's faster, even faster than I fill up. I've already driven this ES8 for over 1,500 kilometers in the city last week and I haven't charged it for even once. I swap out the battery every single day. The battery swap station is all over the city in Beijing. So why should I bother to charge it? It's just a waste of the time. We are in the third part of this video, autopilot. The new ES8 has two different modes. The first one is just a regular autopilot. And the second one, they call it navigation mode, which is smarter. It can determine which line is faster on the highway and the change to that line automatically to pass those slow cars. But the navigation mode can only be activated on the highway, which is where we are right now. So let's start it. All you need to do is just press the little button on the left of your steering wheel. The system said, navigation started. I really don't want to put my hand on the steering wheel, but according to the traffic law, I have to put at least one hand on the steering wheel. Otherwise, if you don't put the hand on the steering wheel for over a minute or two, the system will quit the autopilot. Yeah, it showed me the left line is faster than this one. It's turning itself. Pretty smooth. It is a pretty smart system so far. But sometimes when the road condition is not clear, the autopilot will be terminated. We are approaching the exit of the highway. Let's see if the system can turn the car onto the ramp. Holy. Yeah, maybe this is the point where I think the Tesla FSD might be better than the Neo Autopilot. This system is still a useful and a safe system for everyday driving because it solves a lot of my headaches of daily driving. I'm living 40 kilometers away from work. It usually takes me about an hour and a half driving in the morning due to the traffic. Ever since I got this one, it makes my life much, much easier. Now we are in the last part, which is the most important part of the whole video, the price. The new ES8 has 8 different versions at the price range between 70,000 US dollars and 92,000 US dollars. And the different versions are different in the battery capacity and how many seats does it have. The ES8 has both 6 seats version and the 7 seats version. The 6 seats version is more luxury than the 7 seats one. But the last question, when can we get the new in the North America? To be honest, I still don't have a certain answer to this question. But one thing is sure that Neo will go to North American market for sure. Because it has a huge, huge development team in North America. And people are already spotted a Neo ES6 doing the road test on the road in California. So I guess it won't be too far away from now. Neo also has four other different vehicles, which at the price range between 55,000 US dollars and 1.5 million US dollars. Yes, the 1.5 million for the Nürburgring Devo, the hypercar Neo EP9. So if you guys are interested in any other new models, please subscribe to the channel and leave the comment below to let me know which one you want. And I will make the review video for you guys. Because the boss of the new is also the boss of the company I'm currently working for. If I can get enough views and comments and the subscribers for this video, probably next time I can just borrow the EP9 from my boss and make the video for you guys. Once again, subscribe to the channel and I will show you guys more about the unique Chinese market vehicle in the later videos. Before end of this video, a great thanks to my company Bit Auto for letting me drive this amazing vehicle. And I will see you guys in the next episode.